Hi guys and welcome back to DreamHack Winter 2015. We're having a Grand Prix here, a lot of Swiss rounds, and now we're able to see the third quarterfinal. I'm your host, Nimsch. I'm joined at the desk by Raven and Gara, who's joining us for the first time here. Gara, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, even though I dropped out. But you're still here with us. Yeah. I and mean, it's you get to cast. That's yeah, it's the, the it's bonus, the right? It's also the biggest dream hack. I'm going to almost every dream hack, and dream dream hack Sweden is like something special every time you go here. And you are a dream hack champion yourself, winning yes. the first original dream hack Bucharest. Yes. So, uh, what are your thoughts about the tournament? How did you enjoy it overall? Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I always like those to battle through those Swiss formats. I, I kind of like it. I don't know why, even though it's like really really hard, you get to face against uh, so many new opponents who are really good and yeah I just I'm just having like a lot of fun do you think um the players in general block brought the decks that you thought they were gonna do you think like you had a good meta call uh, this I've tournament or I we've seen some yes. crazy stuff right uh, I think I had the strongest lineup but unfortunately I wasn't the only one I was really surprised because I put a lot of thought into my own lineup but like people are getting so much better at the game like I've seen a lot of other players having the same lineup as me, like Adiu, Oskaka. What was that lineup? Um, Secret Paladin, Peyton Warrior, and Druid. And if you face an opponent with the same lineup, it's it's very hard to, to win because all those mirror matches are very draw heavy, like Druid Mirror, Secret Paladin Mirror, and Peyton Mirror. It really depends on um, yeah who gets the better cards till turn five, and that will like decide the, uh, most of the outcomes of the games. So, yeah. It's so interesting because in the original card games, people normally bring just one deck and then the strongest deck has to uh, face each other uh, many times. But here in Hearthstone, we have three decks, but still, it's a, a lineup. So a lot of people bring the same lineup. They do have those conflicting matches. Was there anything specific that can give you an edge when you face uh, the same lineup? Yes. Um, I, for myself, I take Ragnaros in all of my decks and that really caught people completely off guard. Like, uh, because they, yes, the BGH, let's say my challenger, a, lo a lot of players, like especially Druids, that's how they play against the Secret Paladin. They just proc the Noble Sacrifice, then the challenger gets buffed, then they BGH it. But then I play Dr. Boom, they have no more BGH, and then p play Ragnaros, and Ragnaros almost always survive like multiple turns. And that won me like many games. And then you can take like that. Some people take Harrison Jones, you know, when, when people have Patron or Control Warrior plus Paladin, it can give you an edge, so you can definitely get an edge with certain techs. All right, that's pretty cool. But uh, Purple, who is uh, going to play right now, he brought actually something different. He brought Malaga's Warlock. Raven, how good the deck is? Yeah, I mean, the deck's performed incredibly well. Uh, and he was actually, I was asking him about the deck and how did he think it was actually going to perform that well? Um, and he said he practiced with it for like a week on ladder and it went 80% win rate. So it's like, yeah, okay, I'll take this deck. So, Because the ladder's prep almost representative of the meta game to a certain extent. For the most common decks, you always see Secret Paladin at the moment and those type of decks. So it's pretty reasonable and it's been performing and, you know, it's good to see some brand uh, shenanigans going on now and again. Yeah, absolutely. That's, and it's that's actually a very funny story. I was so close to bring it myself. Um, actually, Purple tweeted his whole deck list like two days before the event and it was like insanely strong, like... Uh, I went like myself 9-0 with it, but I wasn't too comfortable with it, and I knew he would do well with it this tournament. Yeah. And it's very nice to see ac in the actual tournament that he's well, performing purple, so well. Purple is the NA champion, but on the other hand, there is AK Wonder, who made top eight at DreamHack Summer. So this is his second top eight at DreamHack. A great player from Spain, performing really well as well. And he's bringing Druid Paladin and Priest. So Priest is also a surprising class. It's not the dream lineup that you brought, Gar. Yeah, that's um, very surprising to see so many Priest players actually being in the top 16. There were like four or something, I think, in total. And uh, it's very, very surprising because Priest is not seen as one of the strongest classes in the game right now, especially without a ban. Like when you, in, in, in a format like this, you usually tend to bring the uh, three strongest decks with the highest overall win percentage. And Priest is usually not one of them because it's counted as a tier two deck. And it's nice to see that those players are getting so far, uh, far yeah, with Yeah, so something a lot of the players have actually said was they've struggled against Priest players in this tournament yeah. because you can't really make your lineup to be good against everything. Mm -hmm. And because Priest, as you said, is it's unexpected to be picked as a, as a high pick class, then they thought, oh, well, it's weak to Priest, but is anyone really going to bring it? Yeah. And then you see the players who brought it because these lineups are quite weak to Priest. Like, I mean, we saw it in the early rounds in Swiss. That's a lot of 3-0 in with his, his control Priest. And I think AK Wonder's done, done a similar job before with his Priest as well. So, 
really interesting that you can build your lineup based on what you think the meta is going to be, but there's always going to be like a hole there, you know, somewhere that might get exploded. And, and you're not getting any practice against uh, Priest at all. When you play Leather, you only face like Paladins and Hunters and all that stuff. Like you rarely face Priest. And AK Wonder and, and Zetalo are like one of the best Priest players in the world. Like. I'm really surprised by AK Wonder. I think he's underrated as a priest player. Like I, f I faced him like many times also in the WCA qualifier, and and he's playing really really good priest. Yeah, he's absolutely uh, one of the best priest players. But the deck he, uh, he's uh, playing right now is one of my favorite decks. It's an aggressive druid uh, with fell reverse as well. So a lot of pressure, knife juggler. Uh, he has that uh, Darnus's aspirant on turn two. And on turn three, he will be able to coin Fair Weaver. <laughs> I actually talked with him earlier backstage, and he saw the deck, like all pl uh, players know the deck list from each other, and he's like, damn, Purple plays double BGH in all of his decks. <laughs> I'm never gonna play my Fair Weaver. I will just hear a power pass. That's what he said. So let's <laughs> see what happens. Well, there is a weapon as well, so he will not have mana, but overall, um, this destroyed is pretty good. But how good is it versus Patron, though? Yeah, I think it needs to. Um, it's, it's a real tough one. So. Against Patron, they have a lot of the uh, the whirlwind effects, of course, and that helps bring down the minions, like we saw the Living Roots and the Lepinomes. So it's really easy to clear, and the Patrons, if they get on board, can actually, as always, be a bit difficult for the Druid to clear. Um, so I think the Warrior needs to get ahead like pretty early, because the thing with this Druid deck is you don't have to wait for the 9-mana combo. You just put minions on the board and then smash Savage Draw whenever you can. And it's so much damage that the game might just end too quickly for the Warrior to uh, even out and stabilize on. But the Fire War Axe definitely helps with that. Yeah, absolutely. Fire War Axe is a good weapon um, to, to, to kill the minions. And uh, Acolyte of Pain is uh, also nice, especially with Inner Rage. He will be able to kill another as Aspirant. Uh, he also has that pile of the Shredder, so it seems uh, pretty good for uh, purple for for now. Even though he's uh, he doesn't have that many cards, but that Acolyte of Pen is going to mm. provide a lot. It's a bit of a tough one here for uh, Wonder because he's he's not he's just not quite got a good turn. Um, yep. He can drop the minions. Uh, he could like this play opens up to almost gar well, guaranteed acolyte draws, and you definitely want to try and starve Patron Warrior out yeah. early as possible. He could have coined Keeper to silence it, but it yep. still leaves the one three on the board, and then you even further away from the Fell Weaver. So there's just an awkward turn. That it doesn't really feel great either way. I wonder why he decided to not coin out the Keeper though, because that was the highest priority before the uh, Patron nerf, yeah. to not give the Warrior any draws, because yeah. if the as soon as the Warrior has too many draws, he just draws all the answers, has the Patron combo and everything. He doesn't, yeah. like, there's only so much you can do against Patron Warrior. One of them is, like, to, to prevent the draw. It's so funny that he doesn't have uh, any spells, almost, uh, purple, that is, because the new version is running a bit less. And um, do you guys remember which version is he running? Is he running the one with uh, Belchers or the one with a bit more draw? I honestly can't remember. I've cast a fair few Patreon games this uh, this past few days, so I'm not sure. Um, I, I think he runs uh, with more draw. We also see that with the double Dread Corsia. That usually is an indicator that it is like the... People call it the Xixo list. Uh, just because, I don't know, he was probably like the first one. To be successful with it, yes. yeah, on other. So he, we might see no mission inventors. Double BGH in every deck, but he doesn't have it yet. Uh, he has Execute, though, for that Fell Reaver. Yeah, it does mean he has to run the Shred Ring, which kind of... It's okay, but it doesn't feel great, just because you've just put f like half the d health of the minion into it. And uh, and then you've got to do the Execute anyway. But he's burned a lot of cards as well, so... Yeah. On, on the flip side, like, the, the burn is negated. Oh, that was a huge burn. That yeah, I was going to say, like, on one side, Fell Reaver's good, because when you have Fell Reaver on board, you don't care about the cards that burn. But they still have some impact when the Fell Weaver's dealt with, and as we saw then, like, boom's gone. So that's just already finished and out of the way. Uh, we have uh, some technical issues, so the admin is joining purple to see what's going on. Uh, we'll see how that's being resolved. AK Wonder is felt like he's asleep, actually. He's uh, <laughs> looking what is going on. Wait, who roped? This was... Pur I think purple Yeah, roped, purple roped. Yeah, yeah was, was there anything purple wanted to do this turn as well? Was there, was there anything he could do? Maybe he just wanted to to end the turn. But yeah, um, yeah. well, if there I mean is, we a can see him talking to the admins. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. An issue if there if there's a technical issue, we're just gonna uh, probably reset the game. Like at this point, it's really hard to say uh, who is uh, who has an advantage and who who could win from that position because we're really early enough. And obviously, if we uh, have a rematch, they will have to pick the same decks again. 
which is um, favoring purple, I think. Yeah, I mean, um, he, like I said, it's really tough with that match because it's not as if anyone was particularly ahead. There was the Armorsmith down and the Fell Reaver was just dealt with. But um, AK Wonder still had some, you know, he did, his hand wasn't exactly empty and had some options. So. Uh, I, s I still think that Purple was far ahead in that game. Because Agro Druid is not the same as Midrange Druid. Where, like, you have to get ahead on board very early. And if you can stabilize as a, a, like a warrior, for example, the early game, you can survive that. You're like, um, yeah, it's very easy to take away the win. So I don't know what they All will right. decide to I do. Think, I think the guys are... Uh, Continuing on because okay, that's the, good. the technical problem um, happened when Purple actually did Had no all the actions. Anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. He just wanted to end the turn. So, that that was, yeah, so I'm glad we actually get to just carry on as well. Yeah, pretty good reaction from the admins there. All right, so there's a patron, and he can silence the patron if he if he chooses to. That's why he kept the silence then, I guess, for the patron. Yeah, to just try and lock on it. It's just interesting because normally, I mean, it can also be used to kill the 3-2 patron that spawns from the set whirlwind effect. But it's just interesting that if he saved it for the patron, he didn't know the warrior wasn't going to spawn four patrons on, on one turn. So. And for Agil Druid, it's so much more difficult to remove patrons because you don't have ref in, uh, in your deck. Yeah. So as soon as you get like three patrons out it's they're sort of reliant on like a savage roar with some board as well just just to be able to trade and then the moment you do that you sort of throwing your win condition away oh my god that is such a bad turn for for purple he has no weapons no wind effects no inner rage yeah but on the no other hand he is, yeah no, no draw. well he has card draw in a way that uh, there is this acolyte of pain and he still has minions that are able to trade versus whatever druid is throwing at him and Druid has no draw, right? There is yeah. Druid of the Claw was a pretty good pickup there because he'll be able to set up more board. Uh, is there any reason to play Force of Nature? No, I like Druid of the Claw in Taunt. And then you can just hero power with the Gnome onto yeah. the 3-3 three, three, and then kill the Patron off with your 2 Because you leave the eye. Oh. Oh. Or you can just... Yeah, oh. or you can be a face trade and go aggressive. Yeah, now he will probably use Gromash uh, to trade because he knows that there's no BGH in the Druid's deck. Yeah. Well, but this is the decision uh, because he wants to kill Acolyte of Pain. Like, he knows how important yes. draw is in the deck. Yeah. I mean, he has to do it. Like, he's out of cards himself. Like, he has to push. One Savage Roar was burned already. I don't know if the second one as well. Yeah. Like I and also we saw Boom Gone, and that's normally yes. like quite a good comeback card in terms of putting multiple minions on the board for Savage Roar as well. He has to. He can't. Like, he has no choice. Even though it might be... In this particular situation, a slightly better play, but he has to just push damage. He has to end the game. He's getting to the point where he could get his second Savage Roar and he's already got Force of Nature, so... He just, yeah. just go face. It's just, it just doesn't yeah. matter anymore, right? Yeah. Like, the, the minions just don't matter on, on the Warrior side of the He board. just has to draw... I hope the opponent has no more Torrents and no Armor Smith and that he draws yeah. damage. He needs, far, uh, he needs Death Spite here. Oh! Oh, that's a good draw for okay, later. he's just gonna drop Gram. Yeah, Gram is really good as well. If you if you get something like Death Spite, you'll be able to not only kill the minion, but also get the, the Pirate for free. But... Um, yeah, how do you deal with ground? Like, you yeah. can... Do you to continue charging to face? <laughs> <laughs> no, we probably have to keep it in, in stealth or and hope to draw Savage Roar next turn. So you can heal 6 one. with Force of Nature, uh, put him to 6, and then just play the free 2. So with Armor Up, you'll have 8, which means that you win with what? Like, you have 3, so you need 5 damage. So Savage Roar wins the game with Hero Power. Force of Nature wins the game. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the problem is we can see there's, there's a girl yeah. in hand which double taunt even yeah sorry yeah with <laughs> <laughs> the second taunt but the girl like, even this locks down say the the stealth yeah. Uh, saber yeah but so he's like he's seen one dread corsair before so it might be the moment where he just has to take the chance and oh, uh, i think he might have to go for it Definitely. and with the aggressive druid it's like often where, where you just put your opponent and do you have an answer if you don't you're just dead and if you do well i just lose. Yeah. He might also keep it because um, next turn, if he gets Savage Roar, that's potential 14 points of damage with the. Uh, like, and force. he knows the opponent is not holding Virulent Effects because he just played a naked naked patron. So he knows he will survive. Like, he just played the patron yeah. without any inner age or, or Virulent. But this is really the card yeah. you want to see the least when you play against patron. Two damage minions on board, draw three cards for two mana. Lothab is so good here, just blocking the combo. And Purple knows that Savage Roar, Force of Nature, is one of the few cards that can kill him from this position. Yeah, I mean, he's got a few options. He can either play Patron Ghoul, uh, but I do kind of like just low Pepe because there's nothing that's going to kill you from hand from the Druid. And yeah, he's and he's setting up well. counter lethal. Yeah. 
And, there's, and that's there's the difference well. card draw yeah. makes in this deck. Yeah. He was saying he was starved for cards like two turns ago, and suddenly he's got yeah. a full hand. Well, Lepronome is not saving AK Wonder, so is he? Fa he's facing 16 points of damage here. It's a really dire situ situation. There's nothing that he can really do. He can't even cast Force of Nature, so... Yeah, this is over. Yeah, and this year he can't even... It's not like he can make any reasonable trade, or, or even if he trades, he still loses, so... Well, he has to hope that there is no lethal in hand. Yeah. So one damage probably doesn't make a difference. So just going for face and hoping that there is nothing. No weapon, no <laughs> cruel taskmaster. Warriors always have the weapon, right? With 10 cards in some. Especially because he didn't have the weapons in the beginning of the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah, if you've not seen them for so long. Oh, he had the Fire War Axe, I think. Because this does the same game. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, th yeah. I thought they regamed, yeah. Um, yeah, so he had one Fire War Axe, but even so, that late into the game, not seeing any, after y the Warriors just drawn a million cards, it may as well have been. Yeah. The odds on the weapon there for extra damage were pretty high. But a AK Wonder, like, knew how he had, what he had to do to potentially win that game, so it's not like he misplayed or anything. Yeah, absolutely. He played well, but um, it's. Um it's painful to lose the Druid, because Aggressive Druid is one of those decks that can actually free all as well. Gara, how good that yes. deck is? Um, it's it's pretty good, uh, but it's actually surprisingly weak against Warrior, every version of Warrior, just because you have no card draw. Like, a big um, reason why you win as a Druid against Warrior is Ancient of Lore, just because you can outlast them. They will just eventually go out of cards and you can just play threats every turn. And I, I'm just thinking, like, how important is it that AK Wonder lost his Druid against Purple? I think he needed a Druid against the Malilok. Yeah. I think it's not great as well, because Malilok can stop you with uh, Hellfires, with um, Dark Bombs, just uh, dealing with your board. And then uh, Purple has, like, Bran, Healbot. So it's tough playing versus Handlock. It's worse versus Handlock than the standard yeah. Druid. Yeah. But his Priest should do work actually against this lineup. Malilok is way worse against Priest than, uh, than Handlock. Handlock. Yeah. That's for sure. And that opening is interesting. He will be able to go with the 2-4 as because he has a dragon. Uh, he needs to pick up one more to be able to put the Twilight Guard on 4. That's not a dragon yet. Oh yeah, and that hand from purple is really strong. It's exactly what you want to have. Inner Rage, Real Wind. All he's missing is one Death Bite now. Yeah. But on the other hand, Priest has a Light Bomb at some point. Yep. But if you don't draw it, it might be too late because his combo will come for sure. Yeah, that's true. And that there's a very important dragon that AK Wonder um, needed to pick up at some point. So now the decision. Do you go for Power Ward Shield first and then see if you get a 2-drop? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think what, what you'll need to do, especially against this deck, because he needs answers at some point, you need to save the Cleric for, like, guaranteed uh, guaranteed draw. And right now he's also... I don't even like dropping the Cleric now. Because I don't know if it... I mean, I suppose um, because he's got a turn 4 play, I'm just working out when you can drop yeah. the Cleric and draw. And it's not for a little while, actually. Against The thing is that it, it will not die. You yeah. can play Cleric yeah. when it will not die. And right now, against the Warrior, you just know that he will not execute it or, or whatever. Bosh! No, <laughs> <laughs> not that Warrior. <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely true. And his curve is really nice with the Twilight Guardian into Corruptor or um, Azure Drake and then Sylvanas as well. Yeah, this is pretty much doing what, yeah. what Dragon Priest wants to do because uh, whilst having the uh, the effect proc on the Dragon cards that you can just chain drop minions and they're so powerful. Like the 3-6 on 4 taunt is, is huge, yeah. especially against Patron. Yeah, Dragon Priest is surprisingly good versus Patron because you, you set up with those big minions. Yeah, and this is why uh, pa uh, Dragon Priest is slightly favored against Patron Warrior, just because you ha you play proactive, and if the Patron Warrior doesn't get the Death Bite plus slams, you can't remove like those minions and you have no Brawl to come back. Yeah. Like, how, how are you going to clear this board? Well, sometimes people play Brawl, but I doubt the Purple is playing one. But this means only the Dragon Priest is actually a good pick for the tournament because, Gar, you mentioned that the dream lineup is Patron, Druid, and Paladin. And it seems that like Dragon Priest is good versus Druid and Patron, even though it loses to Paladin. Yeah. But it can still lose to both decks because it's still Priest. Oh, yeah. you can say because it's yeah. Hearthstone. <laughs> it can still lose. It's more about like you sometimes don't, don't draw the dragons. Uh, I, l I think healing and then Dark Altus is fine. Yeah, the you probably want a juicier target for yeah. Corruptor, because Corruptor just one-shots the Patron and regardless. And like. Yeah, and Corruptor is always good. Yeah. It's not like it gets worse like later yeah. or something. 
Yeah, I, I like that as well because you, the card you want to try and at least keep up with the warrior card draw, yes. and um, and you want to draw like Holy Noah for for the Azure Drakes with Spell Power yeah, or Light exactly. Pump. You, you just want to be safe. Like when the patrons come down, you never know when they came down, come yeah. down. And you're under no pressure whatsoever with that turn. Absolutely, you want the quality plays every turn versus patron, and you have to have good plays there. All right, but uh, obviously he can also think about yeah. playing something big if he doesn't expect um, the weapon to come. Yeah, this is nice. Another thing would be if he just slams down as Drake because it's also draw in a sense. Yeah. But he definitely has to draw. That's much better. Not only you deal with the minion, you protect your cleric, which is still a priority target. But uh, we're going to see the green patrons there. Yes. So Interage, Whirlwind. And as I mentioned, this can come down like all the time. And you really want to have the answer to be prepared for that turn. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to try and draw into it when it's already happened. Right? So you can go with the Corruptor and just kill one and then uh, trade your free free into the other and get the buff on Corruptor. Yeah, he, well, he can kill the two three threes. Yeah. Um, Do you want to kill the free free though? Like, you might kill the free two to deny the battle Exactly. Rage. Oh, yeah, Nims, that's actually really good. Like that's uh, the best patron player say that it's usually better to let free free lives because of battle rage yeah. to play around the card draw. That's true. You might even want to kill the five one because of that. Not only you deny battle rage, but you also uh, protect your. your and five. even the five one is so annoying when you think about it. It's like so much free damage on board you have to leave up. Yeah, the only benefit um, is that the five one can't actually kill the corruptor. Lucky, is, lucky okay for because of the health. Of lucky for Echo Wonder, there's no battle rage. If th that would be now a battle rage turn, he would be in a really awful spot. No battle rage yet, and no whirlwind effect as well. He doesn't pick it up. This Lotheb. So um, yeah, just kill the five five with the five one and play some minions. Yeah, and now he is also protecting the remaining patron. This is a pretty close game actually. No spells at all for AK Wonder. <sighs> full, uh, it's almost full dragons. <laughs> Only Sylvanas is like, hey, I command those dragons. What up? Yeah, so there's a f he's obviously got a few options, but I don't know if this is the right turn to just play Sylvanas. Can you? Because normally you play Sylvanas onto a board like this, and it's like, well, he just trades the board. But when that board, one of those cards yeah. is patron, that's not a bad thing, yeah, right? If I he has to trade away. He has to go for it. It also depends like, if he has any answers to the patron that he can draw into, like Shadow Ward Pain, maybe, yeah. or. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be rough. They're not normally too common. It's normally just like a death, right, in Dragon Priest. Um, Depends on. I, the build. I just, I just think here it's mm. you're safe enough to drop Sylvanas and have a good impact on the board. Yeah, Sylvanas is like a solid drop that you you up, you have the impact right now, yeah. and Azure Drake gives you a mystery chance to actually no maybe draw something that will be uh, valuable. Yeah, and, and the turn later with Azure Drake means it's just like he's got more mana to to use potentially use the card that he draws. So. I would not hate playing the two free as well because well, yeah, he has enough dragons in hand, right? <laughs> yeah, the thing is that if he attacks into it with a minion, like he will have to attack into it with the patron. Yeah. Now, now there is the death bite. That's why this it's so important to get rid of all the patrons. Even this free possible. one is uh, like a constant big threat. But now the Sylvanas, on the other uh, other hand, for purple, the Sylvanas is so annoying now yeah. because you don't want to play more minions into that. Well, we probably need to kill the board. So kill the two free with the free two. Um, but oh that's yeah, that's, that's that's much better but actually. But yeah. that is good for AK Wonder because exactly yeah, this is what he yeah. wanted from Sylvanas to he just throw his board away because there's got there yeah. goes the patrons. He doesn't care about yeah. losing Sylvanas. He's like, oh yeah, just please get rid of this patron. A two four, not bad. It can protect the Azure Drake. So I guess you just draw cards, yeah. There is nothing else specifically. Play the 2-4 to protect it. A uh, weapon doesn't kill it, so it's not bad. And now suddenly, though, the warrior's only on four cards in hand. Uh, the priest is as well. Oh, that's a better reason. Yeah, as a typically, as I said that. Well, you can go <laughs> yeah, with the... Yes. <laughs> you can go with the death by this turn, if you want. And yeah. then set up a battle rage. That's interesting. Oh! You know, like, because if um, AK Wonder had a death, he would have certainly uh, uh, death the Lothab, yeah. Death the Lothab over just playing like an Azure Drake into it. Yeah, yeah this is yeah, nice absolutely. as well because like can't really. Can you just drop your Sarah? Really, really good much reach. not. No, like yeah. he has like the answer on board. Usually yeah, exactly. you can't do so it. It's, it's so it just completely locked your Sarah out. Where previous to that play, 
Like, Ysir was really good. Like, just so throw it on the board. But that was like a happens. really good read by Purple. Like, he knows there's no Light Bomb. He would have used it for the Patrons. He knows there's no no Holy Nova. He would have used it as well. And there's no Death. Like, really good yeah. read by Purple. So you mean like Purple knows four cards out of five from this hand, mostly? He knows it's like minions or... I don't know what else could it possibly be in Dragon Priest except minions. Like, he would use almost every spell. Yeah, that's true. And he knows the list as well because players got the, li uh, yeah. got the list yesterday. Oh, he's just going to go for you, well. sir. I suppose he's forcing a trade, but the weird thing is, like, unless you get Awakens, uh. he, like... Well, if he gets Awakens, dead. that's and so big because then... Um, I don't like... Uh, just Grom, Grom doesn't die. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, if it was four health, then I'd be like, yeah, okay. Like, you get one card and force the trade. Priest is really bad at dealing one damage. Well, to be honest, he has two draws at least. So he has those Holy Novas in the deck. He still has the Light. Wow, one. double battle rage. It's completely back in the game. Yeah. This deck is so good. And it all thanks and he to the as Purple's well. really, really insane turn. All right, playing Frodding Berserker before attacking means that he is not afraid of Light Bomb at all. Well, suddenly Holy Nova is, is not as good. And that's like another of those turns. Like, why would you play Sarah in, in, in such a board if you have like something better? Unless he actually get well, Holy Nova is great still because it's he can play really Azure. Really good. That's really good. Well, yeah, that's that a huge draw. <laughs> it is. It is. But the Fretting Berserker is gonna survive. Yeah, but he had way bigger problems than that. With like ten ones and five threes. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it just those small guys. He might what? just kill you. They're gone. But it's still like Purple drew six cards last uh, last turn. Look at that combo as well. He has Nightmare, Shadow, or Death combo if he wants to deal with Acolyte of Pain easily <laughs> in the future. Yeah. All right, you do have to Holy Nova. Yeah. Like, you, you, how, mu how much attack a Frodding Berserker is getting there? It's three minions taking damage, which means it's plus three, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's eight attack guy. It's uh, not too crazy. You do heal for two, so you're 24. And you remove 15 power. Yeah. So there's nothing. And you contest N not the a guy. terrible turn <laughs> removing 15 power. But it's always good to think about it. Because at this stage, you're playing Elimination Match. You're in the top eight of Dreamhack. And you don't want to be super hasty. Yeah, of course. And also, like, the, so so we just n now we're just seeing the, the power of double battle rage with multiple minions there. Uh, he's just gone, okay, well, you've dealt with that. Because my hand's so full, I'm just going to splurge everything else back onto the board again. And because the AoE came so late, as, as you were saying, yep. he's got such a good read on what Wonder's hand looks like. He's just safe. He's like, yeah, throw it all down again. Because surely he would have light bombed that turn. Yeah. I if he had Also, it. Deft, before that, like, yeah, he knew, yeah. he really <laughs> knew his Grimmar would survive if he doesn't top deck a deck, de uh, death or a light pump, and then afterwards he could uh, battle rage. Yeah, that was like really insanely well played by purple. But AK Wonder is not that yet. The Twilight Guardian is pretty big, a free eight, and he can deal with the Frodding Berserker with the Shadow War Death. So, purple looking at his hand, he mostly has minions himself, like he can draw some cards yeah. with Acolyte of Pain, and he will be looking for an execute if he gets that. AK Wonder would be in a bad shape. Yeah, it's like very unlikely that he didn't draw an execute yet, right? And he drew like 20 cards so far. Yeah, and he's just seen Shadow of Death as he draws into Dr. Boom. Actually, he oh. can kill the Twilight Guardian with just attack from the weapon and attack from the pirate, but still, drawing a card is always good. I mean, it's, it's much better for AK Wonder that um, he has to trade his board. He needs a Light Bomb oh right man. now. Now it's like Light Bomb only. Light Bomb yeah. would bring him back. Shadow Word Pain is not it. Well, actually, Doc Doomsayer is an option. Yeah, I mean, you do it, right? I mean, he can Nightmare the, the Whelp. Isn't what? it like a 7-7 seven, seven then? Yeah, the Nightmare Whelp kill will actually the kill the boom. And then steal, steal the Acolyte and then heal yourself. That's probably what he's going for. So it's not Doomsayer boys yet. I mean, he's seen Grom, so that's like the highest burst damage. And uh, was there a double patron or one patron? There was one patron. I think it's one patron so far, yeah, it's still one left. Yeah, but you've seen frauding and you are a priest. So you can escape the range. So six damage on board if you steal the Acolyte of Pain. At this point, it's not like that he wants to deny draw from an opponent, he wants to draw cards himself. Yeah, yeah. he actually needs to draw into something. Even like a second Holy Noah would be pretty good. Yeah. He just needs to start pushing himself out of, out of like potential lethal range. And Purple's hand is not too crazy, like he's. Three kind of useless minions don't do too much. And two weapons that he can't play at the same time. Yeah. But 
the weapons provide damage. If you look at them, Death Spider is 8 damage over 2 turns. And then uh, Fari is 6. Wow. That was so good for Ekamonda. Like, this hand could be really good <laughs> instead. And we're going to see all face and then the boom box. Oh, maybe he's going for it. Yeah. No, he's not. Ah, okay, he's placed. Because, because the <laughs> I wanted to see the boom box go. Because the damage potential still exists. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he can still play other minions. Like, if he plays Armor Smiths and even Big Game Hunter, those are minions that um, AK Wonder will have to deal with, and they provide some damage there. And he also just saw Cabal. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, if you hadn't seen Cabal, you wouldn't drop the Armor Smith because you're so far ahead in health and your opponent's so low. Um, Vayne has chosen. Oh, man. Well, he still needs to draw a card with uh, yeah. Acolyte of Fane there. So he can draw. He can he Shadow Word. Uh, if, he, if he survives, he could potentially draw two cards. He yeah. can pop the Shredder as What's well. What's the right? best card he can get? Holy Nova? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, All right. yeah, yeah. He, he's going for one Holy Nova draw. He hopes both Boombots kill the Acolyte. I like that. It's not too bad. Yeah. But he, there's a chance he dies. Wait. Well, he has two draws, right? Wait, and he has a lot of power his, on board. His Cabal is um, great. That either means it's dead or he's dead. So it's not so green. Someone is dead. Yeah. Some, something <laughs> is... Something the Boombots have murdered someone. The yeah. Boombots <laughs> deciding this game. Where did it fly? Oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> he's dead. Look at, look at Purple. Purple's like... Loving it. Interesting. Oh. Okay, so Purple is taking the second deck down with the, his patron, and uh, we hyped up the Malaga's lock so much, but he is an excellent player, he can play anything, and patron deck, guess what, it's great. Yeah, it's pretty good deck, we've seen, we've seen a lot of the players, I mean, uh, Six on Skaka took it, right? There was only uh, Hoy and Navi that didn't, Yeah. you were speaking about at the end of the last game. It's so not even that, it's by far his strongest uh, deck, apparently, he free out most of his opponents just with his Mali lock. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Alright, so I can wander down to his Paladin, and Paladin is one of the best decks in the game right now, so there is the potential of a 3-0, a reverse sweep, but how is Paladin versus Patron? Not too good, I think it's like 30%. Almost every version, of, yeah, every version of Paladin loses to, to Patron Warrior, so this is definitely like the hardest obstacle. And why is that, Gara? Yeah, why is that? Because Paladin, uh, uh, Warrior has insanely great tools to remove uh, Paladin's board. And this is how a Paladin wins. He just snowballs. Like you play the one drop and then the, the creepers, mini bots, and then master for battle. And almost every class struggles dealing with that. But uh, uh, Warrior has six wheelwind effects, double ghouls. Just the ghoul usually trades two mm. for one. And then you have the weapons that usually yeah. trade for two for one. And then you have the armorsmith heal. And then you have the patrons. And you have no silence, no consecration, nothing to deal with the patrons. So as soon as the patrons come out, you just lose. All right. You can see that the opening of Fire War Axe, Death Spite, and Inner Rage is actually pretty huge. It can instantly answer the zombie child. And what, pretty much whatever comes next. Obviously, like, you know, the yeah. general turn two is Creeper or uh, Minibot. Uh, and it's not a full answer, but it's like it's definitely more on top of than other classes. Yeah, if he had ni Knife Juggler instead of the Creeper, he has to Hero Power because he can't yeah, just Yeah, you just can't it. just throw Knife Juggler away. Well, uh, it seems like Purple already has a really good hand. Yeah, he, well, he has Death by Inner Rage Patron, right? So, yeah, uh, that's, that's just, that's almost that's like... That's a dream. That's, you would keep that hand if you had yeah. it in the starting yeah. And the Fire War Axe as well to deal with the early aggression. Yeah, really strong hand. What uh, about AK Wonder, though? Uh, he got that Master for Battle. He doesn't have any big 4-drop yet, and no 5-drop. But for now, he has something to fight back, right? Yeah, he's, he's got an okay start. I mean, you'd never really want to see competitive spirit. Uh, no. in European. Mm. Avenger can do some work with, yes. same same as um, uh, Noble Sacrifice and even Redemption. If you got like, Redemption Minibot, then you like, get some value it, from it's there. It's but Competitive Spirit is horrendous. It's definitely the saddest secr uh, secret to yeah. have. Actually, I wouldn't have mind if he would have played Competitive Spirit Avenger yeah. and then next turn Master for Battle. Yeah, because oh. they, they, it's like one of the few things yeah. where they actually buff each other. Yeah. Well, he's going for Competitive Spirit now because oh. he knows the spider is going to get killed. Like, you want to kill a minion if uh, there is no second minion to play around the bench. Oh, he actually oh, went he for face. face. Purple knows what yeah. is going on. Because so if, this the if this would have been um, Redemption, he would have just yeah. gotten another Hunter Creeper. So you this is really good for Purple. Yeah. Just a 1-1 one, one buff. Now he can clear the Armorsmith, though, with the Cog Hammer, which... 
Yeah, I like at, that. At this point, with the Hammersmith on board, you kind of need to because Mustard just doesn't really do enough, especially because the comp spirit is gone. Yep. Uh, one of the ways you can make uh, an early comp spirit work is if you have a muster on to the, and hold a muster on the board. But Warrior is so good at dealing with that that it's just not secure enough. And he's forced to kill it because you have to play around Battle Rage. If he goes face, he would play right into Battle Rage. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good to kill Armsmith as fast as possible if you play a deck like uh, like Paladin. And as you can see, like this death by just being up prevents like the strongest turn Paladin has besides the Challenger turn, which is Master for Battle. Yeah. You just can't do it. It like also counters the Hunter Creeper because he will kill the Hunter Creeper next turn and the Whirlwind Effect will kill the Spiders. Yeah, and even if they didn't, he's gonna play patrons onto this board. So the one ones on the board are pretty, pretty okay for the the patron warrior. Yeah. Unless there's, unless there's strong ways, because yeah, a lot of secret paladins don't actually play like abusive sergeant anymore. They're not normally the like hyper aggressive decks that we saw earlier on. So it's not like they can like trade up. They need like an avenge to be able to do that, and that's really slow. Well, that core camera, that core camera is pretty smart. Like he wants to protect uh, the spider. Though. I don't know why he wants to protect the spider though. He has redemption. Of it. Did he just want to negate the patron turn? Yeah, there will be a patron th this turn. This just stops the patron oh. turn. But the fact that he had Lothab is just like, okay, I'll just do, I'll just do it next turn, and it's still okay. Yeah. It gives him one more turn to play Shredder, which is actually pretty nice. Yeah. Can he pick up something like Execute? Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> Nimsh, you've been doing this all day. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's well, that's <laughs> probably the card he wanted, right? Because now he can deal with the pilot. But the now th this game is over. Except, oh man, Miracle Doomsayer. Uh, it's possible. The thing is as well, look at AK Wonder's hand. Miracle well, th there's, he needs to top tech Mysterious Challenger to have any sort of... It can happen. Do say into Challenger. It's it's so funny because he can actually use even the Spectral Spiders that are spawning right now to his advantage. And do, do you even execute this? Yeah. You if might that would be a Doomsayer, man, you, you, might you would lose the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why you might actually not execute this. Because, well, it's going to kill one of the patrons. That's fine. But it's like 1 in 70. But you can't. <laughs> you're so far ahead. You don't care if that's uh, part of Shredder or I think the main thing is like he he's not doing it because he's so far ahead mm. and he has boom, so he's just gonna move even more. And AK Wonder's draw is not mysterious yeah. challenger for turn six. So it's gonna Imagine that would be a doomsayer now. Yeah, that would be so funny, right? <laughs> that would be so sick. Okay, it's not a doomsayer, so AK Wonder needs to do something. He cut another secret, and you know what? Those secrets are amazing when you have Mysterious Challenger being played and you get them for free. But if you draw them, this whole hand, of Challenger. this whole hand is unplayable because of the one patron on board. It's, it's one of those yeah. few, few times Mustafa for battles been in hand available from turn three, and just hasn't been played. And there's like six well, on the other there. hand, there's no War Song, so maybe you can play those minions and then attack with them into Lothar. Just gonna poke one. Okay. You have to hear a power. There's no difference between having a 1 1 on board or 2 1 ones. Yeah. yeah, and you probably want to have the weapon capped as well. To attack might make a difference here. Oh, but there's now Dr. Seven. There is. It's a pretty good card. That's what I also heard. <laughs> so, double sacrifice. Uh, Purple is gonna get another patron. And AK Wonder is out of cards. He only has that master. And as yeah. long as patron is. On board. I think he, li he actually just needs to top deck one of the uh, one of the big three in this deck. So either Mysterious Challenger, boom, and then or, or potentially at worst Tyrion because he couldn't play this turn. But he needs to draw something big. Oh, this is like game boom, over. boom into Tyrion. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what he needs actually to have a chance of coming back here. Well, that's consecration, so that's something. Yeah, uh, he has to trade away the uh, the three two into the patron. He has means to do it. He will not be able to kill a Doctor Boom after doing that. But oh man. That's At least so Patrons sad, though. <laughs> there's just nothing like... He can survive, but there's nothing impactful on the board. It's That's like heroic cool. mode, man, in <laughs> ranked. There is one good thing after drawing that Consecration. He will have no floating mana this turn. <laughs> there's that one positive. <laughs> so yeah, you might now. go into Boom, yeah, and then Consecration. Take the damage like a, like a man. And now the question is... You probably go face with the weapon. Honestly, oh, you yeah, attack with the weapon already? Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah, go yeah. face with the weapon and master. Maybe if he gets kings, something. In theory, Gara, it does contest boom on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no. if you look with two taunts and now battle rage again, I mean, has purple just Cut drawn off. battle rage at every like actual moment he needs to draw cards? Oh, yeah. He's every really single consistent. game so far. He's really every consistent. single game, I'm pretty uh, sure I've said, oh, purple's running out of cards. Top deck, battle rage, go. 
squad. Yeah, I mean, is, the, is there even executed. a way out? Is there a way out? He is Tyrion to even stay alive. I mean, yeah, he needs big parts, but he's terrible. <laughs> he actually stays alive. Well, he alive. doesn't die, if that's what you mean. doesn't die this turn. But he can't even hero power. It's like, it's so sad. Well, he could. It's just, you know, like to just... Just give your opponent... Just, just to press it. It, it doesn't <laughs> matter because he can still attack with unstable goal into the free free. Yeah. And yeah, it's free. like... <laughs> yeah, and there we go. It's, yeah, it's it's over. All right, so I can wonder concedes in purple advances to the top four. What an amazing performance. 3-0 with the patron deck. So he's proving to us that he can actually win with any deck almost. Yeah, he's just uh, put on some super strong performances with each deck out of his lineup. And, it, you know, everyone knows the power of patron even after nerf. And we've seen his Maligos lock. He's really doing, pr he's performing really well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Gary, what do you think about his lineup? Is that, it? maybe that was the best lineup? We couldn't even see too much of his lineup, to be honest, but just because he wrecked with Patreon. Yeah, he's like winning with one deck. All right, yeah. Purple, come here, man. Let's come here, oh. I guess. So, how does it feel? You're top four now. Last dr last Dreamhack, you were eliminated in top eight, right? Uh, right before top eight. Right before top eight. And now you're top four, and you have a really good chance to take this tournament. I'd say probably say it's about one in four. Yeah, that's a pretty good chance. <laughs> that's very <laughs> humble. <laughs> After winning 3-0. Yeah, yeah. How's Patreon for you? Uh... Sometimes against certain lineups, it's just really, really good. Uh, Dragon Priest is actually pretty good against Patron Warrior now, but I just abused the fact that he only had one Shadow of Death in his deck by pretty much. He, he drew 15 cards. I'm like, Gromash, go. If you have yeah. it, you yeah. probably win. Yeah. If you don't, I win. That that turn actually decided the game where you went for the Gromash. Yeah. You knew he had no death. He had no like light bomb because he would have done it. He does it. He, there's no light bomb in his deck, and there's only oh. one shadow. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Didn't we didn't know, know that. that. Yeah. So I I was playing on s some information. Uh, wasn't completely. R there weren't. There wasn't a random play. It was just calculated yeah. risk. Yes. So how how much advantage did you get uh, for the fact that the deck lists were uh, given to you so that you exactly know what he has? Like you mentioned that you play, you, you could make some decisions because you know there's only one shot over death, there's no light bomb. Yep. Uh, overall, uh, for the whole top eight, how much advantage do you get for that? Uh, it's everyone can everyone gets the looks. So everyone, everyone plays better because you, everyone knows what's going on in other people's decks. So it's not really an advantage to me because everyone else says it's, uh, it's just a fair playing field all right and also like your decks were actually visible on stream before so for you it's not a disadvantage because people yeah. already knew what you have absolutely all right fair point guys any more questions to purple i uh, know just congratulations on a, a 3-0 at this point in the tournament not too bad uh, thank good you. luck in the next round thank you very much all right good luck man so uh thank you so much for joining us gar on the desk uh, any words from you man like it was a pleasure casting with you again fun as always maybe we'll cast later again who knows yeah hopefully we still have a couple of matches uh for you guys as well so this was the third quarter final we have one more and then we'll have our uh top four so stay tuned